Hello, I'm Rachel Papworth from Green and Tidy and this video is to talk you through my straightforward 10 step process for decluttering an area of your home or office. Um, it's primarily aimed at people who are on my 10 week program, Clear Your Clutter, Stay Clutter Free and Live the Life You Want. Hi, if you're on that program. Um, and I've made it available publicly because it's useful to people more widely as well. So the first thing you've done, obviously if you've already chosen the area that you're gonna be decluttering, um, the first thing to do is to take a photo of it. So grab your phone and take a quick photo, a before photo. And that's because after you've decluttered an area, the new way it looks will very quickly come to seem normal to you. And you may forget how much you've achieved in decluttering that area. And decluttering is quite a, um, an emotional process, it's quite a tiring process. So it's good to have a little reminder of how much you've achieved to keep yourself motivated. The second thing is to, um, to get in touch with why you're decluttering. Now we do a lot more about this on my 10 week program, but just be sure that you understand for yourself why it's important to you to do this, because again, that's gonna keep you motivated. Third step. Clear the space in which you're going to be working. So say I was going to be decluttering this bureau that's behind me. It's got, you know, a, a pull down area and it's got drawers and so on. I would want to clear the space in front of that on the floor in front of it um, so that I had room to work. And I'd want that space to be as close as possible to the thing that I was decluttering or the area that I was decluttering. And I'd need enough space in which to work. The uh, fourth thing is to uh, assemble some boxes and bags in which to declutter. So that you're gonna sort everything that's in the area that you're decluttering into seven categories. Now, what boxes or bags you use is gonna depend on what you're decluttering and where they're likely to be going. So for example, if you were doing a wardrobe um, and you knew that quite a lot of that stuff was gonna to go to a charity shop, you might want to use some dustbin sacks or some, some strong carrier bags. So it depends what you're decluttering in what you're decluttering as to what you're going to sort into. But some, some things that I find useful, I mean, most people have got a stock of carrier bags around their house, they can be useful. Um, or maybe you want some bigger, stronger bags. I particularly like these plastic crates. They store flat, but then they open up into a box shape. Um, and they're lightweight, they've got carrying handles, they're great for carrying things around your house. But don't go and buy things specially. Uh, we've all got loads of boxes and bags around our house, so just assemble boxes and bags that you've already got to sort things into. Now, the seven basic categories into which you're going to sort items, and you could sort any area of your home or office into these categories are as follows. One, I'm keeping this item and it belongs where it is. So I've taken it out of that bureau, I've decided I'm going to keep it, when I've finished I'm going to put it back in that bureau. Secondly, this item needs something doing. It needs some action taking. So it's a piece of clothing that needs mending, an electrical item that needs a repair, um, maybe it's a bill that needs paying. So that goes into your take action, box or bag. The third uh, category is that this item doesn't actually belong to me. It needs returning to somebody else. It could even be a library book, or you've borrowed it from a friend, or you know, whatever. You've come across something, you're like, oh, I could give that back to mum. You know, so you, you, that, that item belongs to somebody else. Or it belongs elsewhere in your home. So you're gonna keep it, but at the end of the session, you're gonna put it away somewhere else. You're not gonna do that now, because that would distract you. You might spot an area of clutter somewhere else. You might spot something else that needs doing. You wanna stay focused on this area. So for the moment, you're just gonna put it in the belongs elsewhere or to someone else box or bag. The fourth category is items that you're going to get rid of by giving them away or selling them. So maybe you're gonna give them to a charity shop. Maybe you're gonna put them on eBay. Maybe you're just gonna hand them to a friend, but you're gonna give them away or you're gonna sell them. The fifth category is items for recycling. The sixth category is items for landfill, for rubbish. And the final category, and this is a really important category, the seventh category, is I'm not sure. Now the purpose of that is to stop you getting hung up and stopped by a particular item that you just can't make a decision about. Like, do, do I want to keep this picture? Oh, I don't know, Ooh, had it for a long time. I do quite like it, but I don't know, maybe it's time to refresh it. And then you get stuck and you're sitting there for a long time, unable to make a decision. 
Don't spend more than 30 seconds on any item. If you're not sure, fine, put it in the not sure box or bag. We're gonna come back to that later and it's not a problem. Move on to the next thing. So setting up those boxes and bags, that's the third stage. You might even find it helpful to label those boxes and bags, to actually get a piece of paper and write on it, take action, belongs elsewhere, and stick it to the box or bag. You might not feel you need to do that, but if it's helpful, go ahead and do that. And if you do do it, do it um, so that the label is gonna really stick. What you don't wanna do is get some post-it notes and scribble it on those and stick that to a black plastic sack, because I guarantee you, during your decluttering session, that's gonna fall off. It's not gonna be helpful. It's actually gonna create more clutter, more confusion. So if you do label your boxes and bags, do that firmly, make sure the labels are well stuck on. One last thing about the categories. They're not absolutely fixed. Do feel free to play with them depending on what you're decluttering. So for example, in the UK, charity shops will take bags of clothing that's too worn to be resold as clothing, but which can be ragged, can be sold for rags. Um, and so you might specifically want a bag that you label rags. So do feel free to play with the categories a little bit. But those seven are the basic set. So, fourth stage. Take everything out of the area that you're decluttering and move it into the area you're working in. All in one go, get it all out. And then clean the area that you've just taken everything out from. Now cleaning might not seem like it's part of decluttering, but the thing is, when an area is cluttered, it's really hard to get it clean. It's too much stuff there to clean around it. So either you don't clean it at all, or maybe you kind of clean a bit around the stuff. But generally we find that when we take everything out of an area, it's quite dirty, it's quite dusty, and it could really do with a clean. And it's just the perfect time to do it because it's empty. It won't take a minute. Run the vacuum clean around it, rub it down with a wet cloth, whatever, get it clean. Okay, then you get onto stage five, and this is where you're actually starting to make decisions. So the important thing here is to be systematic. Go through each thing one at a time and ask yourself three questions. One, am I legally obliged to keep this item? It's my passport, my birth certificate, my driving license, something I need for tax records. I have to keep it. Two, am I realistically likely to use this item? And the key here is about being realistic. And there's a good way to, um, to help you make that decision. Have a look and see if you've used it in the last 12 months. Now, it's not a guarantee that if you haven't, if you haven't used it in the last 12 months, you won't use it in the next 12, but it, it's a guide. It helps you think, well, actually, it's been a long time since I used this. How realistic is it that I'm gonna use it again in the future? Third question, do I just love this item? Now, I may not be about to use it, I may not be legally obliged to keep it, but just looking at it gives me pleasure. It's beautiful. Fine, then you might wanna keep that item. Don't cut corners here, so you find a box of papers, go through the box of papers, don't put the whole box to one side. And remember what I said about not spending more than about 30 seconds on one item. If you're not sure, put it in the not sure box or bag. And with each item that you decide to keep, you've got a further question, which is, does it belong in this area or does it belong elsewhere? And then that decides which of those two boxes or bags you put the item in. Okay, so you've been through everything now. Move on to the sixth stage of the decluttering process. And that is to revisit the not sure box or bag. Now, when you first saw those items that have gone into the not sure box or bag, you may not have seen them for a long, long time. You might even have forgotten that you owned them. But in the time that you've gone on working through that area that you're decluttering, your brain's had a little bit of time to process thoughts and feelings around those items. So you might find that actually now you can make a decision about them. Often I find that people, when we go back to the not sure box and bag, they're quite surprised what's in it. They're like, well, actually I'm really clear I don't want this, or no, I definitely do want that. Or you're still not sure, in which case keep the item. It's fine, look how much you have got rid of. It's all right to keep something that you're not sure about. You can always make a decision about that item again further down the line in some months, weeks, years. Stage seven, briefly revisit the I'm keeping boxes and bags, keeping here or keeping elsewhere in the house. Don't go right back through them, but just have a quick look and see if there's anything that now you look, you think, actually, I said I was gonna keep that, but I don't want it anymore. And you can move it into one of the get rid boxes and bags, but, but don't spend too long doing that. It's just a quick check back. 
Stage eight is to uh, return the items that you're keeping in this area to this area. So in this case, it would be to refill the, the, the bureau. Now, obviously how you do that and how you organize it, that's a whole other subject. And we go into that in some detail on clear clutter, stay clutter free and live the life you want. I'm not gonna do that now, but return those to the area that you've just decluttered. Stage nine is to uh, take the actions associated with putting away all the other boxes and bags. So um, the landfill box or bag, bag it up, um, get it ready to go out for the refuse collection. The, uh, the recycling, similarly, right, get it ready for collection or for taking to wherever you have to take recycling. Go to the take action box or bag and anything that you can do quickly, any actions that are just a, you know, a 30 second task, get them done now. Anything that's gonna take a bit longer, schedule it. In other words, decide when you're going to do it, put it in your diary or calendar, make sure it's going to get done. And then finally, stage 10. Grab your phone again, take an after photo, compare it to the before photo, and give yourself one huge pat on the back. Give yourself a little reward. I don't mind what it is, just don't make it a shopping trip. But you've done a really good job, and it is worth taking a moment just to acknowledge what you've achieved, because that'll help you with the motivation to go on and do the next area of your home or office. I hope that's been useful to you. Um, if you've got any questions, do send me an email, do contact me through my website. Um, always love hearing from you. I also love seeing those before and after photos if you're willing to share those with me. And if you're on Clear Your Clutter, stay clutter free and live the life you want. I hope you're enjoying the programme and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.